Praise the Lord, brethren. Here comes another episode. Finding God and shall keep on because God does it first to find us and we go on looking for him because he done who gives us the desire to find him. He first found us. Now the person, the personality, the biblical figure that we come to share about, of course we pick life lessons from them so that actually in the footsteps that they, as they moved, we also move similarly because they are men and women that pleased God and so that I and you may please God. And so the personality now is the man Moses. In Hebrew, he is pronounced Moshe. And you've read his story about Moshe, about Moses in the book of Exodus. It's the second book in our Bibles. And Exodus means a mass journey. And why is it called a mass journey? It's a mass journey because the Israelites liberated from Egypt on a mass movement from slavery to their freedom. And the person at the center of that freedom and the person at the center of that mass movement from Egypt to the promised land to freedom is the man Moses, Moshe. And his life journey begins in Exodus chapter 2, where we read about his coming into this being. And the Bible says, now a man from the house of Levi went and married the daughter of Levi, meaning that Moses belonged to the tribe of Levi, one of the tribes of Israel. And the Levites were the priestly family. And so the woman conceived and bore a son. And when he, she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. And in verse three, but when she could hide him no longer, she got him a wicker basket and covered it with tar and pitch. Then she put the child in, into it and set it among the reeds of the, of the bank of River Nile. His sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking along the Nile. And she saw the basket among the reeds and set her maid and she brought it to him, to her. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the boy was crying and she had pit on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Remember, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had passed an ultimatum that any Hebrew child born male must be killed. The reason why the mother, the woman, the mother Chogobed hatched a plan to hide her baby born. And the Bible is talking about him as beautiful, nice to behold. And a child born, a little one. Pharaoh is saying, kill every Hebrew boy. Now the mother hides mothers. And so this brings us to the meaning of the name. When Pharaoh's daughter comes and says, I mean, bring me that basket. And when they brought it, opening it, a baby boy crying. And she knew that this was one of the Hebrew boys that the parents had hidden because it was her father that passed the rule, the ultimatum to kill all the baby boys among the Hebrews. And so the name of Moses means to draw out, to bring, to draw out. And because Pharaoh's daughter says, draw it out, bring it to me. Well, while uh, floating on the banks of River Nile, this is where his name comes from. And you realize that draw out, he was drawn out of River Nile. And it was this man, prophetically, the one that was draw out the Israelites from slavery into the promised land. So Moses, the name meaning draw out, he was drawn out of, you know, the water, you know, of a flooding and maybe sweeping it away, but also his future, you know, assignment to draw out the Israelites. 
And so we thank God that we have these biblical figures to learn from, that actually situations may be there, may be around us, rivers, waters, may be all over the place. You know, um, situations that are hurtful, that are harmful, can be around us, but there's a moment when God will draw us out. And this I say, amen. Because Moses was drawn out and the Israelites were drawn out from slavery. And whatever situations that we go through, you know, God raises them up and then he shows his power. He shows his might by drawing us up out of those situations. And so this is amazing that this boy, Moses, the one that we're talking about now. And also this story of Moses brings out the, actually the relevance, the importance of mothers, mothers and sisters. You see, the name that is mentioned, the mother is called Jochebed. She's done actually that hatched the plan and she's done who is mentioned here. Of course, they just mentioned the man belonged to the, to the Levite family. The woman also belonged to the Levite family, but her mother and the younger lady, whom we shall talk about actually in one of our series, his sister called Miriam. Actually, the ones that were in charge of Moses' life. They were the ones that were in charge in Moses, of Moses' situation. So the mother took care of the boy and hid him. And so the name that was given was given by Pharaoh's daughter, Moses, Moshe, the one that was drawn up. And later on, he drew the people of Israel from slavery. And so may God bring situations that are around us to meaning. And so that actually we get the meaning out of what it means. So Moses, from three months that they hid him, I mean, they, they stayed with him for three months. And then that after three months, he he stayed the rest of his life, 40 years old, he was in the king's palace. So he grew up as an Egyptian prince because it was Pharaoh's daughter that brought him out, but a man chosen by God to liberate his people. So situations that could be around us may be preparing us. And Moses being hidden by the banks of River Nile, it was preparatory. God orchestrated that occasion to mean a lot. And so there are situations that we may be in. Is it the situation of poverty? Is it the situation of affluence? The family is well off. Is it the situation of whatever it is? God may be, or may be preparing you for something. And Moses was before these situations and God used those situations, preparing him to liberate his people, the Egypt, the, 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 the Israelites, the Hebrews from slavery. And so when you look at Moses, the man, that was picked. He grew up in the Pharaoh's family. God was preparing everything for the liberation of his people. And so we learn to live a godly and righteous life when we look at Moses. You see, he was there. Even when he was in Egypt, he knew his identity. Can I repeat? Even when he was growing up as an Egyptian prince, he knew his identity. And the identity was, because just at three months, and he was taken there, but he grew up. Because of the Bible talks about, and this begins from Genesis, from Exodus, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. You, you read these things. Now, his identity was, the Bible said that when he moved around, the Israelites were struggling. The Israelites were suffering. And because he knew his identity, the Bible says that he found an Egyptian mistreating the Israelite. So he was moved to the heart. And he came over and killed the Egyptian and hid his body, his body in the sand. This is what the Bible says. And when Moses, I mean, knew that, his identity, he had a heart for his people. And how I pray that in our generation, even when we are in higher places, to remember people who belong to us, wherever they are, are you in the city, are you in town, are you in a perimeter wall, have you remember your people. Moses did that. He remembered his people and he remained godly and righteous because of whatever I was doing, God had set him aside to draw the Israelites from slavery into freedom. And he did this by saving the Israelites from this. Now, the only challenge that he meets is when he finds two Israelites fighting, two Hebrews fighting, and then he tries to set them free. This is where he runs away because the one who was in the wrong, I chose him that, hey, you man, you want to kill me like you killed the Egyptian. And when he knew, when Moses knew that this story had been known, he took off. And I want to repeat, 
that every situation that happened in Moses' life was preparatory. At the Nile, it was preparatory. Him finding the Israelites, I mean the Egyptian mistreating the Israelites and him trying to liberate the Israelites, killing the Egyptian was preparatory. Him running away was preparatory. Wherever he was, and as we shall continue learning more about him, everything was preparatory for the ministry. And so my brother, my sister, whichever situation, be it good, be it testing, being hurtful, being what, as long as you remain focused, it may be preparatory for you. Whether you are old or young, but it can be preparatory. And Moses, every situation was preparatory. And it's something I wanted to mention during this first episode on Moses, that everything that happened in his life was preparatory for the liberation of God's people. Now, one thing that I want to bring out during this session is when we read in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, one of the characteristics of Moses, the man of God, is Numbers 12, verse 3, the Bible mentions that, and now the man Moses was very humble. Humble more than any man who was on the face of the earth. Now, during this episode, we get the meaning of the name Moses, but also get the secret behind his, you know, his achievements, his humility, that was so evident that he was the humblest, very humble, more than all the men that were on earth. And my brother, my sister, the lesson that we actually pick from Moses is that we need to learn to be humble. For God uses the humble ones. Remember again, God uses the humble ones, not the proud. God chose him. He was the physical leader of the Israelites. He had been born in humble situations. Humble situations, poor parents, you know, low family. You can imagine the mother making a basket, reeds, just hiding. Maybe if she was actually was from the affluent family, maybe something would have happened, but from the humble background. And even Saint Peter, I mean Saint uh, Stephen, when he was being killed, he was about to be stoned, he gave testimony about Moses. And he testified that Moses was blessed was blessed by God and he was blessed in two ways. One, that Moses was blessed with good looks. Remember we read in Genesis in the Exodus chapter 2 that he was beautiful. Good looks, beautiful in God's sight. And Stephen mentions this seven in the Acts 7.20 that was beautiful, good looks. He had a natural charisma. He therefore found favor before God. That in his loneliness, he was before God in the, and the sight of people. He was well learned in the wisdom of the Egyptians. Well learned. When we read in this Acts chapter 7, verse 20. Now, with good looks and education, Moses was meant to be proud all over the place. But despite that, the man remained truly humble and therefore he found favor before God. We have seen men, we have seen women, because of their beauty, pride, 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 pride. We've seen men, we have seen women, because of their education, pride, 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 pride. We've seen men and women, because of their economic status, their affluence in society, is pride, 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 pride. But Moses teaches us one great virtue of humility, good looks, education, but he remained humble, he remained usable by God. So when we read Acts chapter 7 verse 20, this is what it says, that actually he was in the midst of all this, he remained humble. And so friends, let me finish by telling you this, that true humility is finding your confidence in God. Will you find your confidence in God? I pray that actually I find my confidence in God and also pray for you that you will find your confidence before God. Try and never leave it. Now, build your confidence. Find your confidence in God in everything that you do. Remember, God 
is with you. And so this Moses was a man. And remember the Bible does mention something about God resisting the pride, the proud people, but he gives grace to the humble. So I pray for that actually God will give you humility and gives you grace to remain standing. So pride goes before the fall. And so this episode, we are just saying, Moses drawn out to draw out God's people. Now, may God position you to help one other person to be drawn out of whatever situation that they are. And may God give you the ability. But also, we also see Moses, a man born from this humblest uh, circumstances. You know, the mother gave the best. Even, you see someone, someone can ask, give the best how? By bringing the baby on the waters of River Nile. Yes, that is what she could afford. Now, the education that your parents give you, the, the, the inheritance that your parents give you, the humblest of it, that's what they are able to do. Now, receive it and position yourself for service. And may God who starts a journey with you, for you, be with you, and so that you remain a person that draws other people to God. And may God bless you and bless all of us so that we shall remain humble and so that we shall find our confidence in God. And so God who started it, May he go along with you. And also remembering that every situation is preparatory and may God continue preparing you to move forward, to move forward and to help his people see his face and may they reach freedom. And so you and I, God blesses us and enables us to be a Moses of this generation. We shall continue from there, but may God bless you. Remember to find your confidence in God. Find your confidence in God because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I pray for you and I pray for myself so that all of us shall be blessed to bless, shall be encouraged to encourage in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>